Hello, Billy Reeves here. Welcome to the K Scope Podcast 134. Hope you're okay. In this episode, some old campaigners Marillion, Tangerine Dream, Trifecta, which is Nick Beggs, Craig Blundell, and Adam Holzman. Hit young gunslingers white moth a black butterfly featuring daniel tompkins from tesseract and jordan bethany on vocals and new boys the helicopter of the holy ghost this is out as a single the album's out on august the 13th this is entitled slow down called The Helicopter of the Holy Ghost. The album coming out in August is entitled Afters and that is called Slow Down. The video 
for that is up on the K-Scope channels right now. K-Chef Dar from Sky Harbour, Randy Slaw, the string arranger and songwriter, who's worked with the likes of Devin Townsend, Mac Christensen, top drama, Jordan Bethany on vocals, Daniel Tompkins from Tesseract, also on vocals, make up the aggregation we call White Moth, Black Butterfly. Their new album is out right now. It's entitled The Cost of Dreaming. Before we hear from Dan and Jordan, this is entitled Under the Stars. There's a voice called moth black butterfly under the stars from the brand new album out now the cost of dreaming plenty to enjoy on this record for fans of the previous one a tone plus there's a lot of up-tempo choruses and some very bleak moods as well i spoke to dan Tompkins and first jordan bethany the vocalists and asked them about the creative process and what to expect. It's going to be really exciting to see what people think to it because it's a very different sound to our previous two albums. I think our hope is that people will hear it and hopefully be excited by the new sound and it will relate to people. Um, I think the lyrics that me and Dan wrote were probably very similar to what a lot of people might have been feeling. Um it's the same in the way that it's very experimental it's very it moves through a lot of different um sounds and feelings and uh, ups and downs and but i think it's very different this time in that it's probably a little bit more um upbeat than we used to maybe a little bit more poppy almost in some in some ways um uh, as it goes through the album we sort of explore more different feelings and more emotions and probably you're right towards the end it's it's probably a bit more introspective and a little bit more um yeah looking inwards and uh, a bit s- slows down a little bit probably a little bit more similar to our previous albums our, ma- our main focus was just to make every song as exciting as possible um i think there was a moment i think the only conscious decision we made really was making sure that we had some songs that had um 
you know, hints of a tone in there. You know, we, we wanted to retain some of that musicality from the previous two albums because we didn't want to alienate, you know, fans too much. Um, but at the same time, we did, we did want to, you know, push the boundaries a little bit. Um, I'd say I'd say our, our main songwriter this this time around was was Randy. Um, he's been quite prolific over the last year, and a lot of the the songs that he was sending to us were, you know, kind of as Jordan says, upbeat, more modern sounding. Yeah, very mod. They're very modern sounding. It's really it's it, you guys have gone hip, man. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't deliberate. Um, it was just, you know, we, we were listening to, de- I mean, specifically me and Jordan were listening to the songs that were being written and um, we were excited by it. It did, I mean, genre genre out of the window. We didn't really care at that point. We were, well, it's amb- well, it, show, well, it shows ambition, doesn't it? Um, I don't think we ever had ambition in our minds. It was more a case of just enjoying the ride, really, and getting a bit of excitement in the music again. So for those that don't know then, Dan, who's on it? Predominantly Randy, Mac and Keshav um, are the main songwriters in the project and me and Jordan contribute vocals. That being said, um, there was a few songs that I um, added some Foley to to make them a little bit more dramatic <clears throat> and to try and bring in that, I don't know, maybe that um, that fantasy element into the record that a tone had. When you say Foley, you mean like as in a Foley artist, um, soundscapes. That's right. I mean, if you if you listen to the track... Um, use you that one is quite is quite a heavy tone to it but it was um it kind of depicts a scene of you know violence within a relationship and there's there's a lot of dramatic things going on and that was just it was just an experiment really and you you know when you've got an idea like a you know bare bones idea you throw it you throw it everything at it to try and get it you know into an exciting form and then it just take takes on its own its own interpretation of itself really and it was um yeah, it was a it was an exciting thing. So you're the man to ask about this. I think of all the people I know, of all the people I know, full stop, of the thousand people I've ever met in my life. You're the person to ask about this. Post pandemic, what happens? What happens to rock and roll? What happens to gigs? What happens to your profession? Get your crystal balls out. I think 
artists that have been uh, trying to keep a foot in the door during the past year, especially in, in the live arena, have discovered that it's a great way to reach a lot of people. At the same time, um, it can be quite limiting unless you're unless you're really pushing the boundaries. And I think I think it become it can become a bit of a a stale approach to kind of reaching your fan base because like once you've done one live show I think people will kind of get the gist I think during the pandemic it was exciting because people had missed live shows so much that the prospect of you know seeing your favorite band online on a Saturday night was quite cool but for me personally when I've seen artists doing that multiple times and it's getting a little bit I don't know tiresome already and it's only been a year. So I think um, alongside artists like um, uh, Pusifer, Perfect Circle, for, for example, I've seen, uh, I've, seen, I've seen Maynard comment that the future of live shows is very much about, uh, you know, doing these live performances online, trying to make them super creative, including video and film within it because it can make it quite a cinematic and interesting experience. I don't, I don't think that it's, you know, it's going to take over live shows are always going to happen when things get back to normal. Everyone loves to go to a show, but I feel like it's given people a taste of what you can achieve by taking things live because you're obviously reaching a much wider audience and you can do some fantastic things that you wouldn't normally be able to do. Yeah. Yeah, A different audience. It's a good point, obviously, because, you know, as we discussed before, rock and roll was invented to get people into bars to drink bourbon, you know, that, and you take that away and you just strip it down to, I mean, it's, uh, goodness knows what's going to happen to the roadie community. Are you, um, are you, are, are you still feeling optimistic? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to get back on the road. I think it's going to be exciting. I mean, there's, there is, there's nothing you can compare to performing in front of a live audience. I'm sure you hear many artists say that and that's never going to go away. Um, you know, and getting out there and seeing the world, it's an amazing thing. Um, I am excited about, you know, the, the possibilities of doing online shows. I feel like there's a lot more that you can achieve. I mean, if you think, if, if, if you look at where, where gaming is going, for, for example, VR experiences, imagine that you could put on a VR headset and be on stage watching your favourite artist as opposed to in the crowd. That's the future of live online shows, I'm telling you. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, Jordan, then, what's the next single? What what can we expect next? What's going to be the next uh, the next grat track, which is a f- ugly phrase that I've learnt recently? It's going to be soma. Interesting. And, and and is there a is there a pop video that has been manufactured for this track? We've got a great video lined up. Yep. <laughs> Sim- <laughs> has it been done? It has. Yep. It's a similar vein to Dreamer, but um, yeah, very excited. Yeah, no, I really like that video because you both had to get your acting heads on, really, didn't you? I mean, is it is it difficult to to do that? It'd be so difficult for me to keep a straight face. I think. I know. You know what was even harder was. Um, it's surprising how hard it is to turn your head over your shoulder for a long period of time. We both had cramp afterwards. <laughs> you just wait until you get to my age. You got to do your exercises all the time. You can really stiffen up. Yeah.
White Moth, Black Butterfly, Soma. And uh, before that, you heard Use You. And before that, Under the Stars. And my thanks to both Jordan and Dan for their time. Always really good fun, those two. And I hope to see them in the flesh as soon as possible. The Cost of Dreaming is out now. How about some Marillion? This is also out now. The K-Scope issue. Two CD version of Radiation uh, featuring Michael Hunter's 2013 remix and uh, remaster as well as the original album. This is Under the Sun. sound of the mighty Marillion from the new 
two CD issue of Radiation that's Under the Sun that's out now. How about some Tangerine Dream? This is also out now. Chandra, The Phantom Ferry Part 2, double vinyl issue on vinyl for the first uh, time. Edgar's 2009 album based on a science fiction manuscript found in 1977 in a military camp in Greenland. This is Apus. Dream Dream, Chandra the Phantom Ferry Part 2, out now on K-Scope on double vinyl. Now, Nick Beggs, Craig Blundell and Adam Holzman, most recently part of Stephen Wilson's group, have a new album coming out on K-Scope on the 20th of August under the name Trifecta. See what you think of this. Pavlov's dog killed Schrodinger's cat. Thank you. 
crazy for some science appeal but those guys in the lab coats they better recheck their stats Pavlov's dog killed Schrodinger's cat from the joyful new album Fragments. That's the single Pavlov's Dog Killed Schrodinger's Cat. Nick Beggs' video for that is up on the K-Scope channels right now. It's out on the 20th of August. It's the very best of kind of KPM chapel music kind of stuff. You're going to absolutely adore it. Very cheeky, very English in a good way. Now, before we finish, uh, the major headline news is the anchoress uh, following the release of her number one in the iTunes chart album, The Art of Losing, on tour for 13 shows with Manic Street Preachers through the autumn of this year. And a headline show at Queen Elizabeth Hall has now been rearranged for May 2022. Also... The Anchoress and band will be appearing at the end of the Road Festival. I'm going to finish with this, a live album from French mighty atmospheric prog rockers, Clone. The album's called Alive. It's out on the 11th of June and this is called Sealed. Thanks very much for supporting the K-Scope podcast and artists share, like and comment wherever you find us. Billy Reeves out.
like you 